Hi, my name is Wilman Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am so excited to be speaking with the young, acclaimed actor-singer, Victoria Duffy. For more on Victoria, you can read more about her right below this video, but in the meantime, here's a sneak peek at the incredible talent of Victoria Duffy. Victoria, how are you? I'm good, Will. How are you? I'm good. It is so nice to meet you. We met through our mutual friend, Billy Reese, the amazing Billy Reese. And the audience has got a little sneak peek of your amazing talent, Victoria. And you are coming from, in this pandemic world, your childhood bedroom in Jersey. I love it. Yes. Yes. I love it. I want you to show people the Dumbo. OK, so this is my Dumbo. He was flying in my crib when I was a baby. And he's been here ever since, yeah. And here you are just kind of soaring like Dumbo with such already a beautiful, beautiful career in, in front of you. First off, congratulations. You are about to head off to Cleveland, getting your MFA in acting at the acclaimed Case Western Reserve Cleveland Playhouse. It's a, it's a joint program, correct? Yes, so basically I get my diploma from Case Western and I do a residency at the Cleveland Playhouse. Most of my training happens at Cleveland Playhouse. It's it's a really cool program. I um, love it. Well, something that you don't know, Victoria, um, when I was in my performing days, I performed 25 years with my twin brother. God bless America. But one of our first professional pop symphony gigs as performers, entertainers, singers, whatnot, was with Carl Topolo in the Cleveland Pops Orchestra at Severance Hall, um, a beautiful hall in Cleveland. I love Cleveland, you, you are going to love it. And I wanna know first and foremost, growing up in the Jers, when did you realize that you had this incredible talent? I didn't until much, much later. So I didn't speak as a child. Uh, my parents were worried, I didn't talk. I was so nervous all the time. Uh, they signed me up for a production of High School Musical at the nearby dance center. And then it just clicked. I was like, I like this. And then, you know, theater kids, they're rowdy. So I had the older kids, you know, hyping me up. So then they regret it ever since. They're like, she hasn't shut up since. So uh, <laughs> I love it. So, it so began when I realized I started to like this, I was like, oh, I can talk, I can speak and be this other person. And I kind of overcame my shyness and I don't know, yeah. That's amazing. Do you have any productions that um, are kind of paramount for you when you think about, um, you know, maybe your elementary school, middle school and high school days of roles that you may have had that really allowed you to kind of even more so step in to your bliss? Yeah, definitely. There was um, in high school, my sophomore year, I'd never done a play before. I always did musicals. Um, like many of us. And uh, I signed up to do the play at, I went to an all girls school. So I went to the all boys school and did a production of Brighton Beach Memoirs. And I had, I was so nervous. I was like, I don't know how to act. I just know how to sing, you know? And uh, the director was fabulous. He had a really, uh, really strong acting training and was really, knew how to connect with child actors and high schoolers and really informed my love for it. I was like, wait, I could be an actor. I don't have to just do musicals. I could do this too. And it was awesome. And then um, my dad was, <laughs> he told my dad, he was like, she could get a scholarship for this. And my dad was like, scholarship? And then he was like, you should, you should be an actor. <laughs> All of a sudden it wasn't soccer camp anymore. It was theater camp. So. I love it. What theater camps did you go to? I did New Jersey Performing Arts Center for three summers. And then I did Paper Mill Playhouse for the last two. So yeah, their summer conservatory. I love it. Well, I know a lot of friends who work at Paper Mill have worked there. It's a beautiful, beautiful organization. And also 
very fortunate to have performed at NJPAC many times and their educational outreach is just incredible. Out of this world, out of this world. I mean, yeah. we're talking about world class and that's what you've been surrounding yourself with, Victoria. So it's not surprising that you're now going to one of our nation's best acting um, MFA programs. And I love the fact that it was at such a young age, you realized that you know musical theater, if done right, can be approached from an acting standpoint. And I think, you know, being someone as introspective as you, not just because you didn't speak until, you know, later, but I feel like there's an there's a natural introspection with you in that you always kind of knowing that singing is just a lot more than making sustained notes, but that it actually is about sustained monologuing. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, even as kids, even if we don't recognize that exact, you know, we can't articulate it, it feels right and it feels wrong, you know, you're like this, and it's that feeling of this feels right is just this feels truthful. This is me, I'm being on, you know, when you're lying. And, you know, as a kid, you feel that when you're performing, you know, oh, I was a liar today. Um, so yeah, it, exactly. I love that, Victoria. And also, I think you have great instincts. I can tell already from you, my little director hat on, literally and figuratively. I love the hat. <laughs> You're welcome. It's part of the brand. What are you going to do? Um, or at least in my head. Um, I love the fact that you have this, since you were younger, a natural instinct for the truth. Because I think a lot of performers, in whatever age they're at, they forget the basics. That at the end of the day, acting is just committing to the truth period. And, um, you know, when I look at also what you've already accomplished in terms of being a vessel to so many great young songwriters, such as our dear friend, Billy Reese, whom I'm so grateful to have co-created the Little Black Book musical that he wrote the music book and lyrics to, I am set to direct and yay for that. You have also been able to already throughout New York City um, you know, premiere some of his work. What is that like to not only yeah. premiere new work, but to work with a friend? It's the best. Um, I remember Billy, because we both went to Fordham together and, you know, great actors, but not everyone can sing. <laughs> so Billy was like, hey, you have a nice voice. You're going to work with me. I was like, great. And it was an awesome opportunity because I had never premiered new works or done anything that was new you know I always had another performance to watch or I could look back and read about um what I was doing and do my research and this it was fun because Billy would throw a song at me and he'd be like do it do what you want and I could make it into my own and it was it was tricky a couple times some you know of all the times I did well with the Billy Lucy song there was a time where I missed the mark but that's with that's what it is with new works and devising new works you know it's sometimes you miss and sometimes you hit and it was just it was a really good learning experience especially with Billy who's so brilliant you know he you know it's always it's never him it's always me <laughs> no, well you know Victoria you bring up a really good point because I think the most successful artists artists of all disciplines out there are the ones that like you actually lean into the failures when actually it's not failing it's actually what a beautiful learning experience and you know I've been able to work with such great actors so far in my little career but I can already see that same sense of commitment to truth and excellence with you and I'm just so excited that beyond you know after you finish your MFA when you come back to New York or LA or wherever you end up going that you're going to just have another tool in your arsenal. And when do you start the MFA program and how long is it for? I start it uh, this fall, this upcoming fall. I'm going to relocate to Cleveland and uh, it's three years, but apparently the third year is more just a residency and um, uh, at Cleveland Playhouse. So I'll be understudying, maybe hopefully performing um, there. And yeah, then I'll graduate my equity card and. Huh? Yeah, so um, yeah. That's amazing. And you know, I also think about you coming on board Phoenix, this brand new app that obviously is going to not only be able to connect artists with fans, but also artists with other artists, you know, yeah. all over the world. Like, for example, I'm literally through Phoenix 
um, working with an amazing composer in China on a new musical. And it's through Phoenix that this is actually happening. So I think of someone like you putting your work out there to not only you know fans and future collaborators here in the States, but overseas, because as you know, great art is transcendent. Oh, yes, 100%. Well, I'm excited you're coming on board. I'm excited to meet you. I could talk to you for hours. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all, please, to look below this video and on more on the amazing, amazing Victoria Duffy. And Victoria, I'm so grateful for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. In the you. digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artist once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.